Wow, picture this creativity. I'm looking at the stars, and there was only one star because it's a little cloudy still, and I saw one star in a certain spot. And I pictured, like, this is amazing, it's awesome. I pictured flying at it, it looked really bright, like yellow. Like, I pictured just like it getting super close and super close and super close and super close at like a light speed. And as I get closer to it, I realize that it's not a burning ball of light, you know what I mean? It is just my imagination being creative. It's not a burning ball of light, it's a big glowing, you know, <laughs> it's a big glowing piece of yellow taffy, like huge, the size of a planet, the way that we see Earth pictures from like a space you know, camera or something. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's a big giant planet of hot taffy, warm taffy. And as I get close to it, I feel the warmth of it. Like, it's something that was just baked out of the oven, like that kind of warmth that I did. I don't know if I want to put that in my mouth yet. And I like flew through it. And as I flew through it, it gooed all over me. And I was flying through the the body of the earth. Like uh, how if you were to dive into one side of the earth, aw. There was a raccoon dead, another raccoon up to it, trying to like talk to it. Aw, it's so... Wow. I was like trying to talk to it. Like say goodbye. The one just, just apparently just got hit. There was one bloody and one looking at it. Wow, that sort of ruined my little fun vision. But it, it, I accept that. It has to happen. Uh, so I'm flying up to the planet, the, the, like the star that I looked at, and I fly to it in light speed. And as I get super close to it, I don't just get close to it. I think I'm gonna crash into it. It feels hot, like I'm gonna burn. I fly right into it, and I'm flying through it, like swim flying, like my hands out, like I'm flying, but I'm just swimming through this hot goo taffy. And then I feel like I can't breathe. And then I, I'm not a, a being anymore. I just become the taffy. And then it like smooths out into heat. And then I feel like the soothing heat sensation. And then I feel like close my eyes and I have my head tilted back, like when you're in the shower, letting the shower water on your face. And I have my eyes tilted back and I felt that heat sensation of turning into the taffy and just being warm goo. And then I had my face turned up, like, I, and I felt like I was taking a shower on my face. And I opened my eyes, and I'm driving in my truck. I was looking at a star. <laughs> wow, that was really cool. And that was like, I could tell that was a self-created one. But it was, it was just, it was fun. I mean, and I, I, like, did it really quick, but then could look back at it and see it in detail, if that makes any sense. And I could tell that I created it instead of interpreted it. My mind is in, on so many levels and dimensions. It's like the imaginary dimension, the creative dimension. The, like It's doing them all, man. It's doing them all. <laughs> I mean, really, I just had that thought in a second. I mean, I know it's nothing that you can make a movie out of, but that thought right there could be such a fun image to, like, you know, make a YouTube video of flying from the ground up through a through a star that ends up being giant floating taffy planet, and you turn into the taffy and turn into heat. I mean, like you could do that with some kind of imagery and some kind of music and meditation, spoken guided meditation. That would be some fun stuff, man. And my mind is just constantly creating. It's either telling me things that I want to know because I asked for it, and I'm I'm constantly getting answers to the questions I asked for. Like, even, like, questions of imaginary proportion. And I know which ones are the ones that are imaginary and the ones that are actual and factual. And the ones that I've asked, like, I've asked stuff about, like, let me think, uh, Jack the Ripper. Like, the, the, the story of Jack the Ripper, like, God doesn't know. Honestly, God doesn't know because it's just a story that people give names and syllables to. So God doesn't know the story of Jack the Ripper. So I don't know if Jack the Ripper was really a person or if it's just a story, or if the people that believed that he was really a person made him really a person, or if he was really just a story. So, like, I like stuff like that. I don't even know if it's true in, in our physical existence, but it might be because of our beliefs in stories. Like, I believe that if we believed the story enough, it would come true. And at a certain time, when people were disillusioned and didn't believe in vampires and stuff like that, to the point where now no one believes in them enough to make them come true, unless one person like me with the God mind, I believe that if I believed truly enough in my heart that vampires could exist, they could in physical form. But I wouldn't want to do that to people, and I believe that more than I believe the other thing. So like I'm, I'm operating out of the right mind, the R-I-T-E right, out of the righteous mind. I'm operating out of my righteous side. And no matter what happens, 
I've already told myself my heart's intent. So that's why God picked me. Like, I'm not going to turn on us. And like, people could kill me and all this kind of stuff in fear of me turning on us. But in all actuality, whatever move I make in the future is for righteousness. So I know that if I harm something for some reason, I can't ever see myself harming something. But if I for some reason end up feeling the need to harm something, I know that it's acting out of righteousness. And it won't be, and I, I can tell when Dan Alexander has a feeling or a sensation coming on for an emotion. But honestly, I haven't, as Dan Alexander, I have not been mad or, like, I get sad for a second, but more like in an emotional sense of love and loss of love of that, like, that, um, that attachment of love. And I realized that it was the attachment, and once I realized that it was the attachment, I let it go. So, like, I'm still working on certain parts. Like Cindy, for like a millisecond, I would think, oh, I loved her. I wish I could be with her. But I'm like, oh, I'm with her. I am her. You know what I mean? That sounds freaking corny and weird, but I am. I've, I've been with her, and, and, and I, she's so in my heart that I can be with her in any way I want to. Like, it sounds gross, but I could have sex with her in my mind, and it would be very vivid. And it's not trying to be whatever, but I'm saying when you have everything, when you have the ability to do everything, that's why they say you have it all. When you realize that you have it all, and you can really experience anything you really, really put your mind to and want to. And if you really want it to be in your physical existence to show people that's what you want, or to help people in the physical existence become better us, then that makes sense. The reason I'm going to use my money and my or my my skill, my my ability to forget money or for to get money is, is to develop other people to become the better us, the better me. Because I know that I'm God and I know that you're God, and I want to make myself better. And not just Dan Alexander better, but myself as God better. You know, like, that's, I talked about, I just said that as Dan Alexander and God at the same time in unison. Like, we're talking together now. I mean, it may sound silly, but that my dimensional frequencies are that whatever. I'm in tune that much that I know that I was saying that, and God agrees with me. Basically put it that way. God agrees with exactly what I'm saying. I'm speaking in a harmonious tune. I guess, like, when I start speaking and it just starts rattling off and it sounds, like, so perfect... And I don't even know that I mean it, but I do, with all my heart. And then I go back and listen to it. It's because that's me and God in tune. It's me in tune with the God frequency. It's just coming out of me naturally without me having any problems. It's like when I think too hard about it, like right now I'm thinking about thinking too hard about it in my head while I'm letting it flow. And I'm almost messing myself up. And I'm developing this a little better too, if that makes any sense. I'm, it's making sense to me because I'm doing it in my head right now. Like, I'm talking to you about being in sync with God and allowing the frequency to come through me without getting tongue-tied or messed up. And I'm thinking about how sometimes when I think I get tongue-tied and messed up at the same time. And I'm being able to talk about it without messing up and getting tongue-tied. And then my mouth is getting really dry, so I might mess up there. But I think that I'm so conscious I could speak with a dry mouth and blah, 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 blah. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I did that on purpose. I did. So, ooh, this is heavy stuff, man. My heart just, like got really light, like I felt like my heart got light, because I know that I need it, but I need, I know my body needs it, but I know my spirit just detached from my heart for a second, and said, whew, you just took a spirit breath, you just took a spirit sigh of relief, that's, that's heavy, man, that's heavy in a light way, <laughs> isn't it weird how things can be like that, like right can be wrong, and wrong can be right, that means there's no such thing, like if you're wrong, like if someone says two plus two is three, they're wrong, but if they would have learned the words two plus two, like if the word four would have been called three in another dimension, and someone said two plus two is four, and then people would be like, no, it's three. In my dimension, it's, it was, you know, they wouldn't say my dimension, they just, in their reality, it was called three. You know what I mean? And that's how it would be. So you're near, there's the right could be wrong to you, and wrong could be right to you, and there's no such thing as wrong and right. I mean, that's a weird way of explaining it. But I mean, there's ways I can explain it, but coming off the top of my head, that's good enough of an explanation to show you that wrong and right can be wrong and right and not there. So, anyway, I love you. I've been talking forever, and I'm just trying to enjoy my night off, but I can't. I mean, I, I mean, I, how am I not enjoying my night off? And, you know, <laughs> like, this is awesome. I, I'm I'm driving around and, and talking. I, I've been driving the last couple of days without even paying attention to the road. That's just totally a subconscious thing. Like, I'm, my, my brain power already knows exactly where I'm going. We all know that if you drive a pattern uh, course over and over and over 
for a certain amount of time, you, you're able to drive without paying attention. I'm able to go places that I'm not even on. Like, you ever go to the back roads, and even though you're talking to somebody and you're going around windy roads, you're not even paying attention. You're like, oh, it's because I've driven for a long time. No, it's because you're God, and you know, you know what you created. So in the back of your mind, when you're in the zone, you're really in the zone. You just drive. You talk to your friends, you're having fun, you're laughing, you're experiencing. God is rewarding you for experiencing and enjoying yourself. When your vibration is messed up, even if you're experiencing good things and somebody in the back seat's unhappy, uh, the, the vibration will mess up. A car will come your way, you'll get in an accident. If you're laughing for a second, but there is enough negative energy in the car, enough negative energy in the aura around you coming from the car, that, that, that like your antenna amplifies your bad energy to other places. Your cell phone amplifies your bad energy to other places. If you are happy and unhappy, you're sending mixed signals all the time. Mixed signals all the time. If your signal is always strong and you stick with your signal that you're sending, like Dan Alexander was always like, I don't care what people think, I love, my, I love myself and I, I, I believe I should love myself because I, I don't think that everyone should be like me because I think it's okay to have sex with more than one person. And that's the thing that always held me back in my mind. And for the longest time, I didn't accept that about myself. And now I do. And I understand that that's one of the biggest things that held me back because I was limiting myself and limiting my belief and saying that, hey, God, you're not allowed to have that. And God doesn't want you to limit him. If you say you can't have this to yourself or, hey, I can't do that, that's like telling God he can't do something. So he's going to say, okay, you can't. You want to limit me? I will limit your human existence. And that's what he does. It's like, okay, it's karma. That's really what karma is. It's basically God saying, is that what you believe? Is that what you think? People told you something, so you believe it? Oh, the gossip says this? Oh, the news says that? You don't believe me in your heart and soul? You don't believe me? And you want to believe the outside source that's telling you this? Okay. Well, that's how your human existence will be rewarded. If you want to drive around on the back road with your friends and they're loving life and they're laughing and joking, I don't care if you're fucked up. I don't care how fucked up you are. Like, if you are out there on the back road having a great time on roads you've never been on, swerving and shebanging and all this kind of stuff, you're great, man. You're awesome. That's perfect for me. That's great. And I will let you have fun. Your friends are having a great time. You have fun. Those vibrations are perfect. But I'll tell you what also happens. You're playing that music that you love so much about God. God Smack is a great band to Dan Alexander. But God, me, I am not okay with God Smack. I don't want the reference of God Smack. Somebody who said that said that with a negative inflection. That, the, or any song that plays, I use that as an example because that's what I said because I'm talking to Dan now. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, that's fine because I'm using him to say stuff and he's listening to me and thinking, what the fuck? This is funny. Oh, there's a deer in front of me. God just talked to me, through me, to you, about me. And I came back to reality while seeing a deer driving. This is freaking awesome. And scary, but it's not as scary anymore. But it's going to make me seem super crazy because I believe it with all my heart and soul. And the more I believe it with my heart and soul, the more I'm going to do it. And the more I do it, the more I'm going to tell you all the stuff that's happening and all the stuff that I've created. And it's amazing. It's craziest thing I've ever experienced, or any that we've ever experienced, that I've ever experienced is God. In a human form, this is the craziest thing I've ever experienced. A person who really knows that he's me. Ha! This is cool. So now what do we do? What do I do? Do I stay a bread person? Do I drive around and deliver bread? Or do I tell people about what really happened, and what has really happened, and even though they don't believe me, and whatever they do, it doesn't matter, because... We'll, we'll all go back to the same place with me. It's okay. I mean, we're all there now. We're all there right now. You know that. It's all just what I created it. And this is, I love the way you're interpreting it in a simple form because people haven't been able to do this. You know what, everybody? This is Dan right now. And I know this sounds really weird. And mom and dad, I love you. And I'm not trying to sound stupid. And I'm not trying to put on an act. It's, it's freaking me out because there's, there's a part of me that's saying, are you faking this shit? And there's a part of me that's saying, you know, you're not faking this shit. This is intense. And there's a part of me that's God talking through me, to me, about me, in all dimensions. I'm telling you, I'm experiencing so many things at one time. Like, anything I focus on, I experience. Anyone can do this, and they know they can focus on something and come up with something in your mind and focus on it. In your mind, close your eyes, focus on it and make it happen in your mind. 
and then open your eyes and believe that no matter what happens, say if you had to slaughter people and get to get to it, you would do it to make it happen, and it could happen. But you're not going to do that because you know that's just negative vibration. Let me finish that important thing, but this is something that everyone needs to know that'll help. The reason that you're cruising on those back roads all drunk with your friends and you're doing whatever, and I can tell, I can tell you this is Dan now because God was going to tell you this through me, and now because he was going to, now he gave me a story to tell you. This is awesome, all right? So say you're going through the backwoods on the roads with your friends, getting all drunk, getting all high, taking whatever drugs we take, and I don't approve of this. I don't think that we should do this. As a human, I don't want you to do this, but God is saying this is okay with him because this is how it is explained. Not that you should do this, but this is how it is explained. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Okay, you're fine. Everybody's fine. That moment in time is fine. But up to that point, your negative vibrations are lingering in all the things that are you. The things that you've especially made, the clothes you've worn a lot without washing in between. Washing with pure water cleans negative vibrations. Washing and drinking clean, pure water gets rid of your body of negative vibrations. Uh, inhaling clean oxygen, pure vapors, scents that you can believe are good for your mind. Even smoking a cigarette in meditation and picturing the smoke going up in your mind as going in and then you blow it out and it takes out the negative entities through the smoke. If you can believe that with your heart and soul, anything you do can help your body, mind, soul through liquid, vapor, and solid. You can help yourself with all those things, being blessed with positive vibrations and how you can clean them and cleanse them. But when it comes to that scenario on the back road, driving around, drinking and getting hammered there's sometimes when people are hammered they're like I don't know how I made it home because they were so obliviated and they were so in awe God was enjoying the experience and he loved it and sometimes their music is playing and sometimes that vibration is, is totally not heard because God himself is overwhelmed by the sensation he's feeling at that moment in time that he's losing consciousness in that body and that amazes him that he's losing himself in that body so he's allowing it to happen for as thanks as his kind of gratitude for giving him that experience and as time goes on and you sober up say you sober up on the way home or you go home and you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning you still feel sort of groggy you start feeling negative after the time when you were already obliterated I was obliterated last night how did I wreck in the morning because you started thinking negative you put on a song and listen to the news the negative vibrations were in the air. You watched the news when you were at home. You spilled your coffee and got angry about it. And weren't like, oh, well, no big deal. You know, those are tests for you. Those are all tests. Every little thing is a test. Every little thing. And you know what? As a sign for me being right, as Dan Alexander, the super genius who's tapping into himself and admitting things and saying things that he usually wouldn't say because he would feel conceited, but saying it because the more he says and believes, the more he can achieve. The more you believe, you can really achieve. Those sayings are all true, my friends. They are all true. And as proof, I just saw a deer come out, and it like came out, and it looked and turned around, and I went around that curve, and right after I thought the thought that I know that I'm right in my heart, I know that I'm right, and I, another deer came to the side of the road, looked, turned around, and galloped away without coming to the road. And in my mind, I already thought I took your friend to safety, and I thought to myself, like, don't come out on the road, because you know you don't want to experience this. And like that piece of it inside of me, and the piece of me that's inside of it, the piece of God that's inside of all of us, sort of agreed, was like, yeah, you're right, and left and walked away. And that's all those things, all those scenarios, all those possibilities and non-possibilities went through my mind in a millisecond. This is happening all the time, every time, not just that one day at Walmart. Now that I'm in control of it and I focus it, it pops and pings. And I mean, I could tell you some of the most creative things and I could tell you some of the most you know, whatever things. This is what happens to prophets. They don't know where their stuff comes from. It just comes from your mind and your mind is such a device. I've tapped into my mind. I could sit here and try to explain stuff and be creative and think about being creative. Or I could go with my heart and say what my heart says in whatever creative fashion it is. Whether it's about a granule of sand right now, or whether it's about talking about the, the, the star that turned into a planet that's made out of taffy. Whatever it is in my heart that I feel like talking about truly and purely it will come out. If you say we'll make up a story about whatever. If I can truly purely think of that story and do it in, in, in creativeness, then I'll do it. But if I feel pressured, I won't do it. Just like if you tell God to make something appear, he's not going to because that's not how it works. It's, he did create laws for reasons. And those laws are meant to be broken. 
for the right reasons. And when I mean right, it's R-I-T-E. For righteous reasons, every law can be broken. And all the laws that I always say, laws are meant to be broken, when people say it and they mean it, they meant it in a righteous way as the God within them. And when I've said it to people about sex, I've said it within, within as the God within me. And as comical and silly as that sounds, I am a sex God and I've been a sex God because I'm God in every form and so are you. But, and anyone who's had sex with me, actually, when I've been there, they understand it. Brittany, I know you hate me as a person, but you do understand this. If you really take the time to listen to this and get put yourself aside and really communicate to me with the self and the spirit that you are inside of you that understands what I'm saying without doubt, like you might doubt yourself a little bit as a person, but without doubt, your little spirit inside of you and every little spirit inside of them knows that I'm talking to that little piece of them. And when they tap into it, they'll know that I'm telling the truth about what everything came from. That's where everything came from, put in simple terms, and God will tell you that too when you tap into this vibration. I just said this to Brittany, and Brittany, I want you to hear this. I hope you do. It's a 20-minute segment of me. I just meant to tell you something for a minute, and I just can't stop because God was, has talked to me, and he's allowed me to tell that he's talked to me. And I've seen scenarios of flying to space and back, and I, I've seen it the whole time it takes. But I've also explained it in a, in a matter of seconds. But I saw the whole thing in the matter of a blip. Does that make sense? And I, you've experienced it with me as I did it. This is amazing shit. And I'm not just making it up, and at the same time I'm just making it up. But I'm not making it up because I'm telling you about it and explaining it, how it's working, and how I can create, and how at the same time it's telling me and uh, acknowledging itself to me. And I'm, it's, it's coming through me. And if you can't hear it, and you can't hear the, the, the emphasis and the, the, the love in my voice and the surprise, and the, 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 the tenseness because it's spooky in a human sense, in a human form, and how crazy it is. Like, I don't know what else I could do, and I, but I'm just gonna keep doing it. And I hope that you don't hate me for it because I truly love you all in an unconditional form. And you truly love me when you get to this unconditional form. And you know that deep down your spirit knows that. They, they, they love Dan Alexander because that's the one saying it, but they love who's talking through Dan right now. I could act funny and be like, God does have a sense of humor. God would go, hoo, hoo, hoo. but now I'm Dan again. And a second ago I was gone. How weird is that? I know it's super weird. Especially if you take it into consideration how major it is instead of saying, oh yeah, you just said God, ha, cool. Because we see Jesus on South Park. But this isn't fucking jokes, kids. This is real. So, I love you, and I'll talk to you later. 22 minutes and 18 seconds. I drove all the way back, and I wanted to come out, like, write a song and do something for Dan, but instead, I did something for the world. Because it's more important than myself.